Jeff Bezos dreams that one day a trillion people will live and work in space. But of course, that day is a long way off. To get there, Bezos has unveiled a series of steps, which will lay the foundations for future generations to come and ultimately lead to giant space colonies like this one. Bezos calls them O'Neill colonies after American physicist Gerard Kitchen O'Neill, who first developed the idea. These are very large structures, miles on end, and they hold a million people or more each. And this structure rotates to induce artificial gravity. And just how big is it? For scale, here's the International Space Station. And these enormous artificial worlds don't just have to be for humans. Some could be national parks. But whatever they're for, Bezos is sure of one thing. These are really pleasant places to live. Some of these O'Neill colonies might choose to replicate Earth cities. They might pick historical cities and mimic them in some way. There'd be whole new kinds of architecture. These are ideal climates. These are shirt sleeve environments. This is Maui on its best day all year long. No rain, no storms, no earthquakes. What does the architecture even look like when it no longer has its primary purpose of shelter? Admittedly, doesn't that sound pretty great? Sure. But how practical is it to have entire companies dedicated to advancing human civilization in space? And even according to Bezos. Those entrepreneurial companies cannot exist today. It's impossible. And the reason is the price of admission to do interesting things in space right now is just too high because there's no infrastructure. And that's where his space company Blue Origin comes in. First, it's working on launching and building reusable rockets like New Shepard and New Glenn, which are projected to drastically cut the cost of launching payloads into space. And secondly, Bezos wants to start pulling resources from the moon. One of the most important things we know about the moon today is that there's water there. It's in the form of ice. It's in the permanently shadowed craters on the poles of the moon. And water is an incredibly valuable resource. You can use electrolysis to break down water into hydrogen and oxygen, and you have propellants. OK, so how do you extract lunar water? You go to the moon, and you mine it, ideally with this, blue moon. We've been working on this lander for three years. It's a very large lander. It'll soft land in precise way, 3.6 metric tons onto the lunar surface. Space companies like Blue Origin, SpaceX, Boeing, and NASA are all pioneering the next generation of space exploration, whether it's humans on the moon by 2024 or colonies on Mars by the 2030s. One thing is certain, the 21st century space race is here. <laughs>